Okay, so Gareth Edwards is the director of Monsters. Um, so he started off by making his first film, which was Factory Farm, which you've all seen, which is probably a 48 hour film challenge, um, and it became very popular and so forth. So basically, before he made any of the films, he was into special effects and um, basically, yeah, visual effects basically. And he used the Adobe software, which at the time, not many of the uh, companies were actually using, even though he questioned it and wondered why, because it was perfectly audible and uh, very suitable for it. Um, anyway, then he came the idea that he really wants to be directing because of this, and he uses VFX by going into it in that way, um, and he had the idea for monsters. Um, so basically, he saw some fishermen and saw them taking some fish out from the ponds and thought, you know, what would be like if they're like aliens or something like that, and then it was like normal for them, just like a road trip, um, and that's where he got his first idea from. So he basically pitched this to um, basically pitches to Vertigo Films, and they asked him to see um, this film, which is basically a romance. But the reason was because it was made on fifteen thousand, uh, which is what they were going to go give him for his one, which is a very small budget. So after he went and watched it, they allowed him to make it. Um, so they're all the films that are known, the main ones: so Factory Farm, Monsters, and Godzilla. Um, so, what's more interesting here is basically how we went from factory farms to a full feature film, uh, which was obviously monsters. Okay, so in terms of the traits that you might need to be a director, um, script writing and organisation are quite often key features because most directors, especially starting from nowadays with smaller budget, usually have to do most things themselves, so it helps if you have your own scripts. Um, and the organisation is obviously good in organising you know, basically what goes on, so it goes smooth. Um, as for the Monsters film, I'm pretty sure there's only seven people for that, and everything was a very low budget, there was seven crew, and I think the two actors were actually uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, to make it more realistic and whatnot, and they didn't have a script at all. Um, and to be resourceful and communicative, um, because of, obviously, <coughs> you have a lot of money starting out. Okay, so the first thing you need then is an idea, uh, like, like he did with his uh, Monsters film. Um, and once you have your idea and you make a film, you want short film festivals, so you get known from a smaller film, and then it'll give you a build up your credibility, and then hopefully production companies are more likely to give you higher amounts of money. So the national events uh, that our main ones are, well, some ones here, is 48 Hour Film Challenge, um, Kentor Film Festival, and Screen 14 UK Film Festival. Uh, there's some four main ones. Um, so if you get in one of those ones, then it, basically you can just add to your stock. But then obviously on that, you get international. So these ones are obviously much bigger. Um, some of them are music slash film, but they're all known for it. And some of them are obviously more um, precise in terms of only art films. But um, a lot of them have a lot of credibility there, and a lot of upcoming directors are all hosting their films in there. Um, so to get funding from, yes, to get funding for your short film, uh, you might need to go to some companies who would basically give you it. And I think it generally it's about £5,000 is usually the amount, even though I'm pretty sure we saw one for 30 grand, but that was a competition. Um, so these are obviously some examples. Um, so Sigur Ross, Simon, you tell me that uh, Sigur Ross, they did basically a music video as well. They gave £5,000 for each people to make music videos and they didn't know what they were going to get. And then they got loads back and uh, really helped those people. Um, some of these aren't actually running anymore um, because of it probably pay off, but what they will do is help you basically with uh, information. So they'll basically give you tips while you're making your film. Uh, BFI is the main one here. I know, yeah, that's useful funding for building credibility. Um, so once you have your you know, background and you make your short films and you put them a couple of festivals, you need to sell your idea which you had for your feature film to the publishing companies. Okay, so the UK production companies are, well, there's a high list of them, um, and that's in there. So, published films, that's the one I will go into. <laughs> Very nice today. Right, okay. Yeah. So then, in terms of, of you wanting to go on to, to be a director, what, what would be your first step? Let's say that you just finished your second year of, of college. Um, I basically look at some film festivals and see what the agenda is on them, and then make a short film that would please me as well as fit in for what they're looking for, and hopefully build up credibility by that, Good. and then get you know funding for some higher state ones, and then move on from there. Guys? Sorry, if I could go on to some of our 
I don't know, I think that's a hard one. Reason being is because there's so many people who go into directing from various fields. Like, as long as you have your traits, you know, because generally, well, traits and skills. If you're quite good at your traits which are right, such as being communicative and, um, or, you know, good organization, you can, use the skill body that you could need could be anything like, you know, PFX. So, I don't know, providing you have your traits, I'm not sure what other skills you need. It seems to me that, that one of the things that university will give you is, is the, the framework and the space to make your own films and, and the encouragement, the guidance and mentoring. Whereas if you choose not to go to university, obviously there's a financial saving and you're not inhibited by the university success infrastructure. Um, but at the same time, you, you don't have that guidance. So I think there is a trade-off to be made there. It, it's, it's almost inevitable these days that directors either have to work their way up from the bottom or they jump sideways from having made the top of their game elsewhere. So Wally Feister, who's the cinematographer for Chris Nolan, has just directed his first feature film. And I think that that's a, a typical thing. Producers often become directors, screenwriters become directors. Ultimately, though, uh, Callum's been right to identify that ideas are what's important and that need to build up some kind of credibility in yourself. If you make four rubbish short films and then go to a production company and say, will you give me some money to make a, a feature film, they're going to laugh you out of the office. Assuming you, you, you even get into the office. If you make four or 40 short films, and a couple of those get premiered at short film festivals and get awards at short film festivals, and you suddenly then got a strong screenplay, and you might get an actor or a, a, good, a good art director, or somebody with a bit of muscle attached to it, that's the kind of career trajectory, which I think is very common for directing. So, okay. Any other questions for Callum? Thank you, Callum. <laughs>